Roadhouse has everything you need for a fun movie. Jake Gyllenhaal is an ex-UFC fighter beating up goons, until he faces off with psychotic Conor McGregor, aka Conor McGregor. But somehow, Amazon managed to make that story boring. What happened? There are enough problems with Roadhouse that it's hard to pinpoint what the main issue is. The characters are flat, the dialogue and plot are predictable, and visually it's just bizarre. In defense of these problems, people point out that it's just a remake of a goofy 80s movie, which is true. Roadhouse originally came out in 1989, and Roger Ebert described it as right on the edge between the good bad movie and the merely bad. Flash forward to now, and nostalgia made everyone forget the bad side, so Prime put out a remake. But the problem with this version is that it isn't good bad, it's just bad. I think this place could be something really special. It's ironic this movie was rewritten just before the writer's strike, because the script feels AI generated. We've all known what a character was gonna say before they said it, because what they're saying is cliche. Roadhouse has more of those moments than any movie I can remember seeing. It's like every conversation is pulled from the examples in a screenwriting book. It's almost never engaging to listen to someone if you already know what they're gonna say. Just like a story, dialogue is best when it surprises you. In Roadhouse, you're almost never surprised, and at some point, you just check out. Look, I should warn you. I grew up in Glass Key, and people have a certain way of getting things done around here. Roadhouse is one of those movies where you wonder why the famous lead actor agreed to be in it. Jake Gyllenhaal is an amazing actor, but this is one of his weakest performances. His delivery is so flat that he seems bored by the story himself. Of course, the reason Gyllenhaal took the role is because it's estimated that he was paid at least $10 million. The characters and actors around him aren't stellar either. Since this is a reboot of an 80s movie, there are leftover tropes from that era everywhere, and nowhere more clearly than the characters. The teenage bookstore owner talks like a stereotypical older-than-her-age kid in a movie. The woman who runs the Roadhouse Bar is a hard-nosed idealist fighting for her small town. Conor McGregor plays a presumably drug-fueled maniac with no personality, which is as 80s as it gets. Every character feels outdated, and other than McGregor, boring. To make matters worse, the acting is subpar, and no one is worse than McGregor. When a movie has a famous non-actor in it, I usually think the person is surprisingly good. In McGregor's case, he was surprisingly bad. It literally seems like he hadn't read the script or any of his lines before showing up to set. He has this glazed look and creepy, unnatural smile the whole time. It's just bad acting that could have been funny, but came out cringy instead. Don't be like that. Yeah, I got a tip for you. If you like this kind of video, make sure to subscribe. I'll be posting every week, and it really helps me out. Thanks. I don't know what's going on with straight-to-streaming movies, but add Roadhouse to the list of ugly-looking titles. The visual style comes from the school of Apple Originals, which is to say that it has so little color it almost looks black and white at times. On top of that, the lighting is really off. Half the scenes have a background that's so bright it's blown out and we can't see it clearly. At the same time, those scenes have barely any light on the characters in action, so everything in the foreground is super dark. It's such a distracting combination, and honestly, I don't understand why so many streaming exclusives have to be this way. Roadhouse had a budget of $85 million according to Variety, which is $25 million more than they would have gotten if it was a theatrical release. So why did it come out looking so bad? Why do so many streaming titles look like this? What's happening? I just love when my ER is packed full of irresponsible idiots. That way, the normal people with real emergencies have nowhere to go. When you remake a cult classic like Roadhouse, it's hard to capture the feeling of the original. That's because most cult classics weren't trying to be cult classics. They were trying to be fun movies with mainstream appeal. Their charm usually comes from the funny and bizarre moments they create on accident, not on purpose. The Amazon Prime version of Roadhouse is clearly trying to capture the out-of-control feel of the original, but the writing and story play it too safe. Instead of outrageous, the new Roadhouse feels under control and intentional, and what it does with that control is try to be out of control. It just doesn't play. Wow, it's like a Morgan here! 
As much as I and many others dislike Roadhouse, they got 50 million views in about 10 days, which is the most successful debut a Prime exclusive has ever had. In fairness, a lot of it has to do with the incredible marketing campaign, but still, it's undeniable that simple and stupid is what a lot of people want. This isn't a new trend, but what is new is who's spending the money on movies. It used to be that Hollywood executives were passionate about producing artistically fulfilling projects. That may sound ridiculous, but it's true. Hollywood has always known that safe projects are better money, but they still chose to make medium budget, ambitious movies anyway. Since streamers have controlled funding, that's changed. These are modern, data-driven companies, and you can expect them to continue the trend towards simplicity because that's always what the numbers have said to do. So are you happy? Are you stupid? I've been punched in the face too many times. Speaking of corporate threats to art, I wouldn't be shocked if AI had some role in the creation of Roadhouse. Much has been made about AI, and there are a couple likely outcomes in entertainment. The first is that most people's jobs are at risk, which is true in many industries. The second is that AI will lead to even more data-driven projects. The only prompt that any streaming company is going to give AI is this. Make me a movie that generates income. Anything further would require risk and creativity, which isn't the corporate approach. AI will never push the creative boundaries of a project without being prompted to do so specifically. This brings us back to Roadhouse, because Roadhouse takes little to no creative risks in its writing, visual style, directing, or anything else. That's what AI movies are probably going to be like, an unnatural combination of movie tropes fused together. What can I do for you, partner? Kind of wonder if maybe you had a computer around these parts I could use. As always, there are a few redeeming qualities to Roadhouse. The story is steeped in Florida, and everything from the bar to the outfits feels very Sunshine State, which is a cool setting to hang out in. The choreography in the fight scenes was well executed, and even when he's phoning it in, it's fun to watch Jake Gyllenhaal in anything. There are a couple upsides to Roadhouse, but they're drowned out by AI-like writing and corporate decision making. I'm sure it's not the last time I'll feel this way about a streaming exclusive. Here's hoping I'm wrong. Thanks so much for watching, and if you like the video, make sure to subscribe. It really does help me out, so thanks again if you do. Also, if you checked out my True Detective video, I just wanted to say thanks for the support. It's been really awesome. Next video will be out in a week. I'll see you soon.